and there's that whole there's like a big meme of it in there with like Charlie with all these like yeah, yeah. Um, pieces of string connecting all this stuff together and he's like losing his mind. That was like us in the house while we were like right, trying to write this record. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound, here with another of our video calls, catching up with everybody while we are all at home. I'm delighted to say from Boston Manor, Henry's on the line. How are you, man? I'm good, I'm good. How you doing? Not too bad, man, not too bad. Coping well. This is kind of how I've been starting off all of these, all these chats with everybody, just genuinely checking. You all good? Is everyone you know all good? You keeping safe, keeping well? Yeah, yeah, a few, few, um, few loved ones have, have unfortunately had it which is a bit rubbish, but um, we're, we're fine. We're just, just chilling, really, and staying, same as everyone else. Yeah. yeah, finding ways to occupy your time at the minute. How's, how's your uh, kind of general routine going? I haven't got bored yet. I have not got bored once since I've, we've been doing this. I, it's been chill. Like I've been just writing songs every day and hanging out with my girlfriend. You know, I've got a dog, so I get to walk the dog once a day, which is good. You know, get out of the house, a little, little one allocated. Bit of exercise, uh, but yeah, no, um, I, I, I can't complain at the moment. You know, a lot of people have it a lot worse than me. My girlfriend's still working, so she, bless her, is, is in every day and stuff, but makes me feel quite lazy, really, because I'm just sat around the house. <laughs> nice, you've got some music to be working on, though, man. Has that been taking up much time? You've been doing a lot of writing while you've been at home? It's all I've been doing, really. I mean, there's nothing else to do, is there? So I've just sort of been enjoying doing that, really, and uh, and obviously, sorting bits and pieces out for like the album. Obviously, we're getting closer to that now, so there's always, you know, stuff that needs to be done for that. But uh, yeah, just I don't know. I've, I've, I suppose I've been trying to take take advantage of something that will probably, hopefully, never happen again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Use your time, time wisely. Yeah, makes sense, man. Makes sense for sure. Uh, we will get onto the new album, of course. Very exciting. We're almost at release week now. It feels like it's been building a while, but very, very exciting stuff to talk there. Before we do, I kind of want to dive back a little bit because uh, obviously the last time we ch chatted to you really was kind of the end of the last album campaign and everything. And I just kind of wanted to get your reflections really on, on that era now it came to an end. You know, everyone talks about the difficult second album. You guys definitely avoided that and, you know, really took it up a gear and did this great body of work that connected with an audience. What are your reflections? What did you learn from last time around with Welcome to the Neighborhood? Yeah, I, I, it, and it was a huge, a huge learning curve, really. I think, um, I think <clears throat> a couple of things, I think it sort of taught us that we can, we can kind of, we are more capable than we thought we were. We, we, we've got a bit more confidence to, to try different things musically and, and in a live setting. But also, genuinely, I think um, we learned just to not take ourselves too seriously after that whole whole thing. Um, I think it was just so much work and so much touring, and it was so much happened in such a like it, it was like two years, but it was just constant. You know, I mean, I feel like I lived a lifetime in that in that era, and I've got so many fond memories of it. It was so much. It was the best two years of my life. It was so fun. Um, but and that and that was it really as well. Is is like I found you know you you. you playing this really quite furious music on stage, but you're laughing all the way to the stage and then laughing all the way off the stage. And I spend the rest of my time just, just laughing with my friends. So it's, it's kind of hard to be, um, to be too angry and too down about things. I kind of learned that I'm very lucky to have to do what I do. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I definitely don't take myself too seriously. I never really did, but especially not now. It's good to hear, man, for sure. I mean, yeah, so many happy memories, of course, at that time, because it really was such a successful album campaign for you guys. So then when it wrapped up and you're kind of getting in the studio and you're finalizing the ideas for this new record that's about to drop, what were the ambitions? What were the aims going in? You know, you'd achieved so much last time. What were you setting out to achieve this time around? Well, it was really hard because that whole thing that you just said was definitely going through our head. We were kind of like, well, this is like... You know, we we haven't made like I don't know. We've made we've made a good record, and it's it's definitely done us well, and it's really liked by our fan base. So this is the first time we've ever actually had to top anything, because I felt like after our first album, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't too difficult to exceed those expectations, because because no one still really knew us at that point. Um, so with this album, we actually had to top something, and and I think um, yeah, that was difficult in a sense to kind of get around that in your head because you keep sort of comparing everything you write in before it's even a song with 
well, where does this fit into the sound where we're going with the sound? And is this right? Does this fit with this other song that we've written? And you start doing these crazy, like, have you ever seen that scene in Always Sunny when, um, when uh, Charlie and Mac are working for the post office in the mail room in the basement? And there's that whole, there's like a big meme of it in there with like Charlie with all these like yeah, yeah. Um, pieces of string connecting all this stuff together and he's like losing his mind. That was like us in the house while we were like right, trying to write this record. Like we fully lost our minds. We, we, <laughs> we had like whiteboards in every room and we were sort of like writing weird mantras to each other to try and just like, you know, but it, it, all of it doesn't work. And, and I was saying, the funny thing is, is that we, we always, before we start a project, we're like, how, let's discuss how it should sound, you know. We, we'll have a bit of this, and then I, like, I, I kind of want to take it a bit this way, and then adding elements to this. And it, it never sounds anything like, like that sentence that you say in that moment. Um, it always ends up sounding the opposite. So um, that was another learning curve for this record, was it was just kind of like, whatever we sort of set out to do, once we finally, like, it didn't work and then we relinquished that whole idea um, and we were just like right we'll just write what we want to write and just not think about it that's when the actual songs started coming um, so yeah we were in our own way for a long time yeah it's funny that you say as well about like so many different ideas and all that kind of stuff because I think the first thing you've already said about it in the mag and stuff but one of the first things you do really notice when you listen to the record is how diverse it is and we've done video with you with yourself before talking about actual influences on the band I feel like with this in particular you really clearly must have been listening to quite a wide variety of music when you were prepping for this album talk to me about some of the diverse influences that have clearly fed into these new songs yeah I mean it, it, we've always been a bit like that really is we've always sort of tried to sort of we talk about music constantly like we, we, we're kind of music nerds and we'll just sort of always be trying to introduce each other to new records on the on the road and stuff but I mean we still had our core influence I would say which I'd say all the kind of uh rock side of things that we're influenced by is, is all kind of like 90s based really alternative it, it all kind of pulls from from that world but um honestly we've been listening to a lot more electronic music um listening to uh, a lot of like a lot of just random songs from from the 80s 70s and 80s of, of sort of like pop and rock stuff that you might not always sort of think of in that era and, and mike sapone would, would always kind of show us be like you heard this you sit down you'd be like it would be like a madonna song but one you'd net like a fucking deep cut and you're like oh this is really actually really cool and i've been enjoying kind of like giving artists that I'd previously written off in my youth another chance. Like I, I got into U2 while we were making this record um, and I always hated U2. You know? Just little, little things like that, I suppose. I've kind of been discovering very obvious bands in, <laughs> in my late 20s. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of come from all over the place, really. I think, I think the influences were always there, but I think for the first time we've sort of gone, well, can we like put it into one of our songs kind of thing, which is... Sometimes definitely doesn't work, but sometimes it does. <laughs> nice to experiment though, and it definitely seems to have paid off. You know, you've got a nice cohesive record that definitely has some new sounds all over the place in there, which is really cool to hear. Um, case in point with the singles, because it's nice that each of those that have come out, yeah, they sound like Boston Manor songs, but they're all very, very different choices and very out there. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about some of those. Let's start with Everything is Ordinary when that first came out, because that's probably one, of the, probably one of the heavier moments on the record, I would say. Talk to me about putting that particular song together. It was, uh, I was actually just um, just doing a, a thing about this, in, uh, this song the other day, um, and it's really, that's the one that's kind of changed the most from, from the demos, and I was just listening to it this morning, the demo, I was like, this is just a completely different different track, but it was, um, it was really weird, it just sort of sounded like a very vague, like a bad Linkin Park song, like, I like Linkin Park, but it just sounded like, if someone did Linkin Park shit, it would sound like this, um, and so that was, a, for ages, and we just kind of hated it. Yeah, and, and we got into the studio and, and we were kind of, the idea came together really quickly. Uh, we were just kind of bouncing around ideas on, it was the point where you kind of, you either throw the song away or you completely pull it, pull it apart and put it back together again. Uh, and, and to be honest, we, it, was, it was just March of the Pigs, Nine Inch Nails, that, that really fast drum beat that's just on a loop. That kind of, it's, it's more of an interesting time signature there, but it's, it's that really repetitive, aggressive drum beat. We are like, let's just try this. Um, and then it just, became like a weird punk song and it worked really well i think and um we just wanted to give it it's not as aggressive as, as nine inch nails but we wanted to give it that sort of bite so it was just distortion and everything i've seen a lot of people being like the production the mixing on this song is terrible and it's like well that, that's the point it's meant to be like distorted and horrible and just a fuzzy fuzzy chaos 
uh, but the drums were just two room mics, um, and which for us, like, there's only like 80, like, I don't know, 20, 30 drum mics on it. So we just have this big room mic and then just put a big compressor on it. Uh, and then we did DI all the guitars and then it still didn't quite sound right. And then I tried the auto tune thing and then it, it, I don't know, I just liked it. It sounded like a, a, a dial up connection song. I, li I liked it. Um, but that, yeah, that one for us was definitely a, an interesting first track to release for a record, I think. Yeah, nice entry point though, I think for sure. Because like you say, you could definitely hear whether it's a Nine Inch Nails influence or just try different types of sounds in there, which I think flows through the rest of the record really nicely. Um, talk to me about putting together the record as a whole, really, just in general terms, because like you say, over the last year, you guys have been touring constantly, and whether that's headliners or support slots, you guys have been out, out and about. Writing-wise, were you trying to get that done while you were out on the road? Did you have a proper writing period where you sat down? How did that whole kind of work? It's especially the way we tour, it's always really difficult to do. Um, to, to kind of, we always set out to do it and it, it just never quite quite pans out. I mean, there's stuff that has been written on the road, but um, we tend to do the bulk of it whenever we get like a couple of weeks off, um, which was really difficult about last year because we, we hardly got any, any weeks off whatsoever. So it would be, you know, do a month and a half touring, come back in a week, you're back two weeks, try and get some writing done back on the road. Um, and it, and it took its toll really. And, and when it came to sort of September time, we had a, we had a full month off and we were like, we have to finish this album in this month and then the next month we went to the studio. Um, and we, we sort of hit a wall and we were like, we, we're gonna have to like not, we, we can't make this record. Like we were all over the place. Like we were even talking about not being able to write songs like that anymore. And, and I don't know, breaking up mate. I, I don't know, it was, it, was, it was a bad time really. But then we, um, yeah, I don't know. It just, and literally in the last couple of weeks, some of the, the songs that were really quite far away just started to come together. And then, um, but then when we got to the studio, it all changed really. We haven't had uh, that before where we actually write songs in the studio, but I'd say about 30% of the record was, was written in, in the studio. And then, um, and I felt it, it was so much better for it because it was the, the, the writing process was a lot more organic because it was just us in the room with our instruments kind of record it, jam it, pick it apart record it and just keep going and, it, and it, I, I really want to do more writing like that in the future but uh yeah the writing process was very stressful um and and it which made it all the more gratifying when we finished the record actually it was it was a real challenge but it was it was really really uh, an accomplished feeling i think Absolutely. No, it's quite the achievement, man. I mean, you've already said uh, in the magazine as well, in the great piece that's come out with you guys, you know, of course it sounded like it was a challenging time, which is understandable when you get run down after a big campaign like you guys have had and everything. Do you think, were there any, is there any particular moments you can pinpoint or any particular songs on the record, I suppose, where it did start to properly click for you? What was the track that kind of brought you back to that point of thinking, you know what, this could really work? Uh, yeah, no, the, unfortunately not, because the way we write is we kind of, we're all in a house, and we're all kind of in little groups in three different rooms and we have a different song going on in each room usually and we just sort of like pass it around and pass it around uh, until kind of the later stages and I, I think we couldn't sometimes we can't really see the wood from the trees with that it's more focused writing but then you sort of like we've got no songs and then you listen to them you're like oh yeah we've got like 12 songs they're just not finished yet um and and i don't i think at one point we could just kind of do that thing where we sort of look back and we're like oh like we have actually got some some stuff to work with here you know it, it's there's at least three or four songs that we really like that we know are great there's other songs that are, are still being written that can be good um but the thing is we, we we wrote like two albums worth of material and we just binned off half of it and just kind of got rid of and the one album that was left we got rid of half of that as well like we we really kind of chopped it down and sort of start not start again but um yeah we, we 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 had to kind of do that really because it was it was going all over the place yeah it's interesting man nice to have that much to play with in the end though that you can start actually whittling it down in that way and kind of get to that finished product uh i wanted to ask you as well of course about the title why did you settle on glue as the title for this new record well there was a lyric that never never made the record in the end about about a glue trap um, and, I, and I thought that whole image was quite like, it's such a brutal thing, a glue trap. I really, I really find it quite horrible. But, um, and there was a whole thing with Rat King and, 
rats, I don't know. Um, but then, th- th- so initially I was like, I kind of want to call the record Glue Trap because I like the, the sort of imagery of it and the, and the symbolism and the, how it sort of connects to the themes. Um, but then I started thinking, well, it, it, it's not a negative album. Like, it, it's not as, as negative as the last record. It, it's actually quite positive. It's just very aggressive. But it, it's quite a positive and it ends on a positive note, I think. So I was like, I don't feel right sort of naming it something that bleak. Um, so I thought of like glue as also being something that kind of brings, binds things together and provides some sort of strength and stability and all that kind of thing. So I like the duplicity of the word and it looks sick when it's just written down big in capital. So I was just like, it, it just kind of fits really. And uh, it's one of those, uh, you kind of pitch ideas and it's, eh, it's all right. Uh, but that was just said that and everyone just kind of went, yeah, that's that's definitely the the one, and you just know when you hit it, when it when it's right, you know. So oh, for sure. Stuck, really. Yeah, you always it just kind of stuck. Hey, there you go, just kind of hey. stuck the glue. Very nice, very nice. Use that one again for sure. Uh, what are your plans then for release day? Obviously, it's a weird, weird vibe when you know you a, a very good thing you're able to release music at this time, and great you got it ready to go. And I think very important to have new music coming out at this time. Uh, but obviously, weird environment. Do you know what you and the boys are going to be up to around release day? Going to try and celebrate in any way? <laughs> yeah well i mean we'll probably just do a big zoom call a couple of beers you know but um i imagine but uh yeah so we, we have a few ideas so we, we initially uh, it's really really annoying actually um well, not annoying, it's a shame but we were going to have a, a like an art show uh, that was going to be free for fans um in london um which was curated by us featuring a lot of like original artwork um, and in collaborations with artists that have worked on producing um, some of the material for this album um, uh, and, and some installations. And we can't do that anymore, but we are going to have like a digital art show um, on our website, which is going to feature as much of the artwork that we're supposed to feature as possible in a digital format. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be doing a listening, uh, an online live uh, stream listening party um, where the boys and I have all uh, going to listen to the record talk about some of the various songs and that. Um, and then we're going to be available on like a Q and a on, on, I'm not sure what, what channel yet. You have to stay tuned on our socials. It might be Facebook. I'm not sure, but we're going to um, be answering people's questions and talking about it. So that'll be uh, sort of the, the night before the album comes out. So you can get a bit of an exclusive listen to it that way. Um, and yeah, we're doing, we're doing a few um, sort of live stream acoustic things and, and as whatever we can really. Um, but obviously we are we are very limited because we can't we can't kind of see each other, which is a which is a shame really. But yeah, it is a real shame because you know we we were, would be gearing up to go on tour right about now, which I was so excited for. We had so much planned for it, and you know it was going to be a big moment for us. But um, you know this stuff's more important. We have to focus on on each other now and what's what's important. So it's not the end of the world, you know, and I'm at least, I do think it'll be nice that people will get to kind of live with the record for a little while before, um, before they see it live. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's a unique position as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was saying that with a, with a few bands recently, it's kind of nice people get to know the album before they actually go out and see it live. And it's good to hear you doing, you know, planning on doing live streams and stuff like that. I think that's been a recurring theme in all these conversations is people trying to find new mm-hmm. ways around doing stuff while we're all stuck at home. I mean, you got any more ideas in that route? And do, how do you think that's all going to work in terms of uh, moving forward with these ideas? Well, it depends on how long this goes on for, really, doesn't it? Because initially, before it was the, the, lock, the actual lockdown, um, we thought there was just going to be a case of, I mean, very briefly, because it moved quite quickly, but um, we thought it was just going to be the case where, uh, you know, events would be cancelled, but we wouldn't go into full isolation. And we were going to do like a full... Um, full production show a bit like what Code Orange did and I've seen a few bands doing it uh, we were going to do that on the, on the night of release um, but in terms of moving forward delivering content to, to fans and stuff the good, the good thing is is that we have we are able to still produce music um, so I, I don't know that we will necessarily be releasing anything that soon because we've got an album coming out in two weeks but um, I think it does mean that we're not going to be delayed by this Really, all it means is that the tours are kind of pushed back. But I, I'm, I'm excited by the creative opportunities that it's presented. And the cool things that it, that it has meant is that I've, I've sort of been communicating with other artists and, and people that work in creative fields more. And we've talked a lot more about collaboration because people have more time on their hands, you know, for the, for the first time ever. They don't have the obligations that they normally do, which is just free people up with, 
with so much time to be creative. And, and I think even if you're not like in a band or, or, or do it professionally or whatever it is that you do, I think being creative in any form is so important in this scenario. It's, it's a way the mind needs to be active and it needs to work. Uh, it needs to learn and it needs to create. So if you give it that, that outlet, you, it, it's so good for your mental health and for your, for your physical health as well. Me and my girlfriend have just been painting like um, every day in the garden and stuff which has just been so nice but it's been really good to keep like at one with with yourself and and with your surroundings so yeah i think everyone is just going to be i I think there's going to be a lot of shit hot albums come out in like six months to be honest i think yeah the isolation tapes man yeah yeah 100 percent yeah it's gonna be interesting to see you know i want to do i want boston manor to do more collaborations with more artists i want to um I want to start, but that's, I, whenever we're done with the record, as soon as it's recorded, we're like, right, next thing. So um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm, I'm excited that uh, people are, are, are being positive and are trying to use this for good and, 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 and support each other and stuff. That's great. Yeah, 100%, man. It's a good attitude to have. And you, yeah, you've got to keep going, got to keep being creative. Uh, Henry, it's always really good to chat to you, man. Congrats on the album again and best of luck with release week and everything. And I'm sure when we get all of that, this, uh, we'll be chatting face to face again, I'm sure, very, very soon. I can't wait, man. Thanks again so much for having us and thanks for putting us in the magazine and, and everything. And thanks to people for, for watching and stuff. Always, man. All right. Good to see you, Henry, everybody. Mm-hmm.